Hi, and welcome to another episode of 8-Bit Retro Refix. And on this week's episode, we have got Phil Whitley's Commodore 64. Phil's quite well known uh, in Facebook. He tends to sit quite a lot in the Commodore 64 stroke 1 to 8 group. Um, does a lot for the community, um, which I'll pop up a few pictures and stuff to show you along the way. So, I was browsing through Facebook the other day, I not saying the other day, but a couple of weeks ago now, um, and Phil posted on Facebook, oh no, I think the 64 has just died. I was playing a game and it crashed, and the graphics went weird, so I turned it off and turned it back on, and now I'm only getting a black screen. Has anybody got any ideas? So, a few people had commented on there, they'd all jumped in straight away and saying that, you know, send it to me, I'll fix it, etc. and stuff like that. Um, I, I, I'm not about that. I, d I don't really like um, jumping straight in and saying, send it to me, fix it, and to try and make some money off somebody. It, that's not me. I'm, I'm, I'm not about that at all. Um, I would prefer to try and help and guide, so long as you're prepared to have a go and get hands on. Um, so I'll give you a few tips, a few things to test, things to check for. Um, and if you can't get it and you can't fix it, then at the end of that, if you want to send it in to me, I'll take a look and repair it for you. So everybody on this post line had already said, um, it could be this, it could be that, it could be other, it could be this. Black screen. The black screen. The black screen can be boiled down to a multitude of things. Um, black screen can be caused by um, the VIC chip. It can be caused by the SID chip. It can be caused by the PLA. It can be caused by um, the kernel ROM. It can be caused by the multiplexers. It can be caused by the color RAMs. It can be caused by a voltage regulator. There's a multitude of things that it can actually cover. So what I do in my videos, and if you guys have noticed, that I don't pull out oscilloscopes as such. I don't want to do that because you guys don't have this kind of equipment. I can do that if you want me to. But it doesn't seem sort of right because what I try and do is repair these things as a layman or a laywoman in the street that doesn't have all these things that want to try and repair things themselves. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay, you could say, well, any idiot can, or any fool or anybody, whatever you want to terminology you want to cause with, um, create with that, that anybody could swap chips around until it works. Hmm. Yeah, you can, but what do you do after you've swapped chips? And how many chips do you desolder and swap and buy to try and get it to work? Well, you may as well, in that case, by the time you've bought all these chips separately, you may as well just buy another Commodore 64. So what I tend to do is I take, I'll put a few screenshots up and a couple of little clips that I've done um, while I'm chatting along here so you can see what actually I've done. So when I first switched this system on, it gave me a black screen. So I, I, I pumped some dioxide straight into the power switch, which is usually a culprit first, because it, it's got two in there. You've, you've got two voltage lines in there. Um, if the RAM line goes down or it's got a bad connection in there, it's only booting half of the system, you're going to get black screen. So the first thing I always do is deoxide the power switch, which that was done first. Didn't make much of a difference. The second thing I did is I pulled the heat shield off here, and I changed the VIC chip, just to be on the safe side. That was okay. So, when this Phil sent this in, he says, thanks very much um, for having a look at this theme. See what you can do. Um, I didn't remove the board from the board because I thought it would be protected. Yeah, well done, Phil. Yeah, you're better off leaving it in here um, and leaving it like that. So I'll just move that out of the way. So, you can probably look at the screen now and you can see that I've got this... PLA was made out of the GAL chips. This is one of the boards that I built up myself. It works perfectly. I've tried it with the Ultimate, Gideon's Ultimate 1541 cartridge. Works perfectly. You'll see that later on in the in the clips um, as I'm posting them for you. Let's lift that up out of that way. I don't like seeing these. I don't know what happens to all these capacitors. I don't know why they all end up flat to the board. It drives me off the clock. They end up pushed over and the legs touching and all sorts of weird and wonderful things that don't make these things work properly. 
So, when I got this one off Phil, the only thing that was socketed was the SID. So, without starting to desolder a load of, loads of chips, I pulled the SID straight out, got rid of it, took it out of the equation, and every time I turned it on, I was getting this kind of screen. Or I was getting this kind of screen. Or getting this kind of activity as well. As you can see, I put the Jupiter Lander cartridge in there. Um, Jupiter Lander tends to bypass most of the things. Um, it ignores kernel ROMs, etc. As long as the CPU is working, video chip, etc. And stuff like that's working. Even some of the things with the PLA, it bypasses most of the things with like the PLA, etc. And stuff like that. So you did get something on screen, which you can see in that little video clip there. It's working, but you're getting all graphical display errors. So what I tend to do first is... Um, the CIAs are known for giving bad graphical glitches and things like that. Um, I didn't really get much of a black screen out of it. It was started doing other things. Maybe because it had cooled down. So I piggybacked the CIAs. It made no difference. I piggybacked the kernels, uh, the character ROM, and the other ROM, and it made no difference. I piggybacked the PLA. It made no difference. So at this point, we're sort of getting to uh, an area now where, um, okay, we're piggybacking and we're getting nothing. Which made me think back to this switch with the power. If everything was okay, then the power. So we, I put the dead test cartridge in. As you can see on the screen, it's got a few graphic, graphic, graphical issues, but it it run and it passed. It passed everything. So it still pointed me across to a power issue. You know, back connection in the power thing, causing resistance in there, irregular power around the board, would cause irregularities, switching on and off and stuff like that. So on my, on my other dead test cartridge that I've got, it's got a little reset switch. So when I plug that in and I, and I put it up and it comes up with all these graphical displays all over the place, if I hit the reset switch, it, it turned fine. So I started thinking, well, I wonder if it's a capacitor. You know, you switch it on, it energises, it builds the power up across the board and you just do a soft boot, a reboot with the reset switch and, and it works fine. So that was seemed to work okay. So it was throwing me off a little bit and throwing me around a little bit and I thought, hmm, it seems a bit strange does this. I think I want to attack that PLA first. Because they are well known, we all know within the communities. Every time somebody goes, I've got a black screen, I've got glass classical issues, PLA, 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 PLA. That's all you ever hear, PLA, PLA. That's because it's a common cause of failure in the Commodores. It's one of the main common causes. <laughs> Not all of them, trust me, but it is one of the main ones. And it is a bit difficult to diagnose on that one. The PLA was soldered to the board. So the first thing I did is I removed the PLA chip. I put a socket in the board. Um, and then I put a normal PLA into there and tried it. Hey presto, working perfectly, as you can see with the screenshot there and the little video clip of the um, Donkey Kong loading um, with the sounds from Adrian Digital Basement when he's going like this all the time <laughs> so that was pretty much it really so what I did then is I changed the PLA I pulled the PLA out and I put one of these gals in that I bought this one so this is one of the gal chips that I bought off, off the old eBay at first, because I wanted to see what they were about originally. Um, the ultimate cartridge didn't work. Now if you look on this chip on here, I think it's got timings, it's got different versions. When I run up and look on GitHub, there's different versions of this chip. Um, not versions, but timings. So you can see this one, it's been soldered directly to the barn. So the, I couldn't really take them off to see, and dump to see what timings have been loaded onto them. So, I got some more gal chips. I got some more gal chips as you can see here. I built this board up and I put sockets on it instead. So now these gal chips can be taken off and tested. So I programmed them up for once with, with some uh, some of the software first time. Didn't work with the ultimate. So I took them off and I reprogrammed them with another version with timings. And hey presto working perfectly. So that's pretty much done. So then run a few games on it um, just to test it and make sure it were all okay and what I'm going to do um, at the end of the video 
is I'm just going to start a couple of games up on there um, and show you that it's all working back up, back up and running. So, it's a bit of a short video this week. Um, it was quite an easy fix with this one. Uh, apologies for the last week one. We've been 45 minutes on, on the last video. It could have been a lot shorter, but sometimes that's just the way it goes. Um, but Phil, thank you for sending this one in. It's been a pleasure looking after it for you. Um, you do a lot for the community. Um, so I'm not going to charge you a lot. I'll just charge you the cost of the the gals and the PLA that I've replaced in there and the postage back. And I'll be in touch with you to arrange that and get it back to you, Phil. So you can get back posting your stuff back on Facebook like you've been doing for quite a long time now. You must be missing your Commodore, um, as we all do. Um, so yeah. So I'm just going to put this back together and put it into a case. He's only sent it like this. I'm saying put it back together, but he's sent it like this. Um, and that's all we've got. I do have another top. I'm just going to put a top on it, move over to the Commodore, and we're going to crack it up and have a look at it playing some games. So, yet again, it's another PLA. So I don't think we want this chip, so what I'm going to do, what I normally do with these chips is, is I normally bend them legs over, and I bend them legs over like that, and then I squish it down. So I know, if it's folded over like that, I'm never going to use it again. So, I've got a little box here, look, with all these little chips in. There's my chip tub. In you go. For some chips. You got a tub of chips? <laughs> so I've just been saving them up now and popping them into that tub. I don't know what I'm going to do with them. I might get somebody to do something with them. Key rings or something like that maybe. Something like that, who knows. Um, but yeah. So I'll see you over back over at the Commodore 64 and we'll test this unit out. Okay, so we're over at the bench. As you can see, there's no lid on. There's Phil 64 underneath there. That's my top that I've just popped on. Just to, uh, so we can use it basically. I'm going to flick it on. Just bear with me a second while I just adjust the camera slightly. And I want to try and turn that brightness down a little bit so you can see on the screen. So I'm hoping you can see on the screen a little bit better there. We've got a um, fast loader on there. Now to see on the screen now at the moment. Right, so I'm just going to pick out on a game. Um, <laughs> so try a bit of Don King Kong. Don King Kong. Nutter board. I'm going to mount that disc. Mount it. Install fast load. And we'll get that loaded up. Press the space bar to skip that part. Do we want unlimited lives? Yeah, why not? Takes a little bit to load up. It'll come on in a minute. And there's the Adrian's digital basement when he's going like this. <laughs> I always mention that in my videos. He's a great guy, he's Adrian. I love it. It's great. And you can hear there that the sound's doing quite well as well, coming out of the SID chip. And so that's one of the tests that Adrian does on Adrian Digital Basement, is to use this to, to listen to the sound to see if there's any irregularities in there. a little bit dark on the screen it does for me and all to be honest but I'm just trying to stop the flicker
<laughs> didn't get very far on that one, did I? So, okay, you can see that's working now. I'm just going to go over to a more demanding game, if you like. Oh, um, one of the main demanding games, if I can find it. Is Super Mario Brothers 64. This was a game written by a guy um, for the community. He wrote it just for the hell of it, if you like, and gave it to the community and wasn't there at all um, to make any money from this game at all. He just did it to give it to the community. Um, and yet again, Nintendo had it pulled from all the sites because it's Mario, and that's what Nintendo do. And it's not like we're going to be making millions and megabucks off Mario's name, is it, from a, a 1982 computer, to be fair, especially when he's giving it out to the community. But they still wanted to pull it all down. But it was a little bit too late. Nobody, they didn't seem to uh, jump on it that fast. It had been out there and the community spread it around so fast. But this is very, very, very demanding, is this game. So, again, I'm going to mount that disc. Go for fast load. F1 to load. So I'm looking on screen now and on the menus on this one it says recommended version European 50 frames per second. If you've got NTSC the game will actually automatically detect and put you into 60 frames per second. Start game at the bottom, um, play recommended, there's no turbo available so if you have got the turbo adapter to plug in you can. If you've got dual SID you can you can configure it for dual SID. Um, so yeah, it's, it's quite a powerful game to be fair, and I think when you see it, you'll be quite shocked at um, how close to the real thing it is. fire button for jump it's push up okay fair enough we're learning as you can see it's very very close isn't it, to Super Mario's well it is Super Mario's to be fair They've done very well at porting it. The side scrolling is absolutely fantastic. The music's awesome. Yep. So, that's another fix. And that's all done for you, Phil. Um, I'll get this parceled up for you and back into the post for your first thing Monday morning. I um, mean, it should be back with you by the end of this week, hopefully, for you. So you can get back on posting on your Facebook with your games again, which I know how much you love. So once again, thank you very much for watching another episode of 8-Bit Retro Refix, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye!